So, in Homer's Odyssey, we find out about this encounter between Odysseus and a cyclops named Polyphemus. It's an extraordinary story and an extraordinarily important episode in Homer's epic poem. It's also a huge moment for our understanding of Greek mythology and ancient Greek culture. Hey gang, my name is Dr. Moore, and I teach great books at St. Thomas University. And in this video, we're going to talk about Odysseus and the Cyclops. So this story about Odysseus and the Cyclops in Homer's Odysseys is really the story of Odysseus's big mistake. It might be the biggest mistake of his entire life. And maybe this episode is the key to the whole poem. So it all starts when Odysseus and his men are sailing back from Troy and they find themselves on this island. They wander around and find a cave and they start eating some stolen cheese. We soon were at the cave, but did not find the Cyclops. He was pasturing his flocks. We went inside and looked at everything. We saw his crates weighed down with cheese and pens crammed full of lambs divided up by age. The newborns, middlings, and those just weaned. There were well-crafted bowls and pails for milking, all full of whey. My crew begged, let us grab some cheese and quickly drive the kids and lambs out of their pens and down to our swift ships and sail away across the salty water. But Odysseus isn't satisfied with some petty cheese theft. He wants to find out if this cyclops, like a good host, will give them a gift. So they camp out in this cave and wait for the Cyclops to return. And this is when everything goes wrong. Now, we need to contextualize this episode. So Homer's Odyssey is all about parties. More specifically, it's about hospitality. At the beginning of the poem, Telemachus, Odysseus' son, he travels to visit Nestor, who welcomes him. He travels to visit Menelaus. But that's not all. Odysseus' wife, Penelope, is plagued by an unending party. She is under siege by suitors who are wasting away Odysseus' wealth and destroying his household. But remember too, the events of the Odyssey are precipitated by the Trojan War, and that whole conflict was caused by a violation of hospitality. A decade before Odysseus ends up in a Cyclops cave, the handsome Trojan prince Paris visits the Spartan Menelaus and then absconds with his wife in the night. All of this should signal to us that hospitality is enormously important to this culture. So now here's Odysseus and his men, not satisfied with sampling some cheese, camped out in Polyphemus's cave, waiting for the monster to return and give them a gift. And when the Cyclops does come back, Odysseus has the audacity to ask. Polyphemus asks, Strangers, who are you? Where did you come from, across the watery depths? Are you on business or roaming round without a goal, like pirates who risk their lives at sea to bring disaster to other people? Yeah, that's them. They're pirates. And Odysseus responds, we're Greeks, we're on our way back from Troy, and now we're your visitors. Now we beg you here at your knees to grant a gift, as is the norm for hosts and guests. Please, sir, my lord, respect the gods. We are your suppliants. And Zeus is on our side, since he takes care of visitors, guest friends, and those in need. And now we learn that Polyphemus does not have much respect for the gods. Or more specifically, he does not respect Zeus. Polyphemus is a child of Poseidon. And Zeus and Poseidon, even though they're brothers, don't always see, well, exactly like brothers, don't always see eye to eye. So Polyphemus grabs two of Odysseus' men, smashes their heads, and eats them. I said before that this poem is all about parties and now we are at a nightmare dinner party where the host is eating the guests. The Cyclops goes to sleep, he wakes up in the morning, he eats a couple more of Odysseus's men, and then he goes out for the day to tend to his flock. And this is when Odysseus comes up with his master plan. He has his men sharpen a stake into a large spear, and when the Cyclops returns home for the night, after he has his meal, Odysseus charms him and gets him drunk. Here, Cyclops, you have eaten human meat. Now drink some wine. Sample the merchandise our ship contains. And then in conversation, Polyphemus asks Odysseus his name. And Odysseus says, My name is Nobody. And when Polyphemus falls into a drunken sleep, Odysseus and his men put their plan in action. They thrust the spear into the Cyclops' eye and blind him. Then, in the midst of all this violence, we get one of the best jokes in all of Homer. As Polyphemus cries out in pain, the other Cyclopses on the island come to see what's the matter. What's the matter, Polyphemus? Are you okay? Are you hurt? My friends, nobody is killing me! Who's attacking you? Nobody! This is one example of Odysseus' legendary craftiness. Another example is his escape plan. He uses some rope 
to tie his men to the underbellies of the Cyclops' sheep. And so the next day, when the Cyclops opens the door to his cave, Odysseus and his men are able to escape in secret. And then they steal the sheep! They take the sheep back onto the boat! And after that, Odysseus makes his big mistake. He taunts Polyphemus as his ship sails away. Hey you! Cyclops! Idiot! Odysseus needs the blinded monster to know that it was Odysseus who bested him. My taunting made him angrier. He ripped a rock out of the hill and hurled it at us. It landed right in front of our dark prow and almost crushed the tip of our steering oar. Then I called to him again. My crew begged me to stop and pleaded with me. Please calm down. Why are you being so insistent and taunting this wild man? Cyclops, if any mortal asks you how your eye was mutilated and made blind, say that Odysseus, the city sacker, Laertes' son, who lives in Ithaca, destroyed your sight. The Cyclops, now knowing Odysseus' name, prays to his father Poseidon for revenge. <laughs> and the sea god plagues Odysseus for the rest of the poem. So one of the key mistakes that Odysseus makes here has to do with honor. We are shown here the dangers of pursuing honor above all else. If Odysseus had been content to be anonymous, he could have escaped unharmed. And perhaps Poseidon would not be so angry with him. But because Odysseus wants to win, because he has a lust for glory, he needs to name himself. He needs Polyphemus to know that Odysseus was the one who bested him. This story then, in part, is about the dangers associated with the pursuit of glory. But more than that, we also need to think about Odysseus's poor hospitality in this episode. He and his men are a bit like the suitors here, showing up uninvited, taking what does not belong to them. And while the Cyclops is, of course, a murderous host, Odysseus and his men are arguably no better than pirates in this whole episode. It is significant that the Greeks put hospitality under the jurisdiction of Zeus, the king of the gods and the god of justice. And why would this be? Like justice, hospitality matters because of our essential interrelatedness, the ways we are naturally connected to each other and dependent upon one another. And it's worth remembering that in the ancient world where there are no telephones or grocery stores or ambulances, the hospitality of strangers could be the difference between life and death. But more than that, when a ship full of men shows up in your city, the stakes are very high. Is this visitor someone just who loves the gods or are they someone very dangerous? And think about Odysseus. What kind of person is he when he shows up on your doorstep? Should you welcome him or should you be nervous? See you next time, everybody. Talk soon.